is. You crazy. What's up, everybody? We got people up in here. How you doing, everybody? See it a little better. If people are talking about uh, Kickstarter and it being an addiction and stuff like that, and uh, someone asked us the other day, like, how many Kickstarters have we backed this year? Or even, like, what was the last Kickstarter we did? The last Kickstarter we did was uh, Suburbia Collector's Edition. We are not, despite the fact that we do this every other week, um, this is more to, I guess, know what's coming out, I suppose, uh, rather than um, to actually get stuff because we just, we're not big Kickstarter people anymore. We're just not. We're just not. Can everyone hear me all right? Uh, we do not have a Yeti. I, the Yeti that I usually have here for streaming, we had to take to the studio because our Yeti broke and we're in the process of getting another one for there so that I can bring that one back here. So I've ha I'm having to use the microphone on this little camera, which is actually not too bad, but uh, we got Dutch Yoda, Missy, Jason, David, Grizzle Dizzle, um, Alex, Dutch, love it, what's going on? And Diz, I, I agree with you, I'm too poor to be addicted to that Kickstarter life, it's just too much. <laughs> Petition to rename this the stream. Games will be playing in two years. That's not a bad, not a bad thing. It's not a bad one. You're not wrong. Um, sounds gonna be good. I'm glad. All right, cool. Yeah, it's probably not gonna be quite as high quality sound as usual, but that's okay. So, hi everybody. Uh, this is Kickstart Led Hearts. This is a, a bi-weekly stream. Does bi-weekly mean every other week? That's a dumb way of saying that. I hate that. Bi-weekly, bi-annually. Bi-annually should mean it happens twice a year, not it happens every two years. Um, but nonetheless, we do this every other week and we're basically just going through Kickstarter together, uh, seeing what's coming out on Kickstarter, seeing if there's anything we want to back, see if there's anything you're interested in backing. Um, and we specifically will go through the list that our lovely, uh, Mr. Slivers makes for us. He is kind enough to do that. So everyone give Slivers a little, a little clappy, clappy poo, um, in the chat. Cause he's actually the one who compiles this whole list. And mostly what we do is we look at games that, uh, people in our community are interested in. So we're not going to look at every single game. We're not going to look at every single one that comes out. We're mostly going to be looking at stuff that's really, really hot and then stuff that people in our Discord have specifically um, expressed interest in because that's mostly what we're interested in is talking about what you want to talk about. So if you're not joined our Discord, there's a link in the chat right now for our Discord um, that you can join our Discord and so you can start putting stuff in there and then just chat with the community as a whole. Um, what's up, Helen Adams, Quicksand, Rosie, I love you, um, David, Phillips, what's up, brother? Um, said, so I'm back from May until I, uh, I back from May until August when I get my tax returns and vacation money. You get tax returns in August? That's wild. Um, what's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a good weekend. This weekend has gone by exceptionally fast. I was over at, um... Miss uh, Paula Deming's place yesterday, uh, helping her film some stuff for her new season of Things Get Dicey. So that was what I was doing yesterday. Today I was uh, working on stuff all day, and then we had a bit of a pet emergency. So it's been a busy weekend. I wish it was a little bit slower. A little bit slower would have been nice. But hey, what are you going to do? Because um, we got a busy week ahead of us. And so, you know, just we're just cruising right along. Okie dokie. Um, as Alex said, I back some Kickstarters, but I buy so little amount of games that it's that it balances itself out. That's totally fair. 
Perry, Funky Side, thank you for always telling us your um, your Twitch name because if they're not the same here, sometimes we're talking to people that we talk to every day in Twitch and we just don't know that your name is, you know, John or something like that. <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. I want to see uh, how this looks in this one. We're not guaranteed. Ooh, but, oh, oh, oh my gosh, what happened? So I want to see how this looks in this uh, thing. I'm not necessarily going to keep this right here. I'm just curious. Um, hi, that's me, and that's the chat over here. So we're going to be looking at Kickstarter games. We are doing uh, a little display capture so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing. So as we're going through Kickstarter, we'll be going through this whole thing right near uh, together. Where did my chat go? Here's my chat. Um, tax returns in May. Hold on. So tax returns in May. Vacation money at the end of July. Okay, okay. Um, I see, Dutch Yoda. I see. Tech Turns of May makes much more sense. I was like, do, do, does the Netherlands do a whole bunch of different... Like, what if, like, in the Netherlands, your tax time is, like, I don't know, March? Or, like, October or something weird like that? That would be wild. Um, okay, people. So we're going to go ahead and go. So the um, we're going to go ahead and start on um, tiny, ultra tiny epic galaxies. There are more, how we sort these whole things is they are sorted by uh, date they came out. So again, so there's ones that have come out after this, but again, when Slivers compiled this list, this was the newest one. And so these ones we'll look at in uh, two weeks. Um, and so we, although I'm curious about shark nerdopoly, what does that even mean? Um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Missy, I said my 901 Bosk uh, today. Very cool, very cool. Um, I really wanted to play Bosk. Uh, uh, it is very pretty. It's got a cool theme. I like those kinds of... Uh, I feel like trees, tree games, a lot of times are, are kind of... end up being really thinky. You have like Arboretum, which is like super thinky. You have um, uh, Photosynthesis, which isn't super thinky, but it's way more cutthroat than you think it's going to be. Bosk is like super brain melty. I think it's very, very cool. Did you hear any more about Taburu? I saw someone say it would connect over the internet to someone else's board. I did not hear that, but I also haven't really looked much into uh, the Taburu. Uh, that's the thing uh, Simon's working on, right? Right? <laughs> they said, what is vacation money? Gosh, I don't know. Um, who knows? All right, so the first thing on here is we're starting with uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies. Also in our Discord, and I'll go ahead and drop another link in there. Um, in our Discord, there is the uh, Kickstarter list that Slivers compiled, so if you want to uh, come along with us and see what's coming up or something like that, um, please feel free and do that. Also, again, I'm going to be passing over stuff for stuff that people have specifically mentioned, so if I pass over something and you want me to go back and look at it, just tell me and I'll go ahead and, and stop. Uh, I, I don't mind doing that. We have kind of a shorter list today, so it is totally... Doable. We're not on a super time crunch um, like we are sometimes. And my computer is super slow because this computer's old as hell. Okay, you can go any fast or ultra tiny epic galaxy. Um, for real, I don't think it's a thing in the U.S. Vacation money, is it? No. And our vacation time is one not guaranteed, and two, a lot of companies will give you like, know, like a week or two. <laughs> it's like I, remember I was talking to Dan Hughes one time about how much vacation time he gets, and it's like two months. I'm just like, oh my god. Oh man. Um, Alex says, I'm starting my vacation next week, and to celebrate, I bought a Nagaraja and Proving Ground, supposed to get them in the middle of the week. Ooh, very fun. Um, I'm probably going to be playing Proving Ground on Tuesday on Twitch, because Mike is in tech week all week for hit the play he's doing right now. So uh, he'll be there for tomorrow's stream on Gen Con stream, but he won't be there for the rest of the week. And so I'm going to be playing some solo games. The good thing is we just got a ton of new games, um, many of which have solo variants. And so, uh, But we also have Proving Grounds, which is a solo-only game. So I will be uh, uh, playing that either Tuesday or Thursday. What's up, Bizzer? How you doing? And what's going on? Um, um, what's going on, Sass Queen? And we got Sheral up in here. Hi. Um... I did not know that was a thing either, Dutch Yoda. That is nuts. My chat is over here, which is why I'm constantly not looking at you. Um, yeah, and your husband, uh, Missy, works incredibly difficult. Works incredibly hard, is what I'm about to say. 
So this is ultra tiny epic galaxy, so 20% the size, 100% of games. Of the game, did we need this? Is this something we we the, that America was asking for? I get five weeks pay time off. Yeah, Dutch, you can go ahead and leave. Go ahead and leave right now, please. Um, you can go ahead and leave. Can you solo that? This you can. I think you can solo this indeed. I mean, I, I guess it, they're already small. That's the whole point. I don't get these. I don't get this. Is it literally just the exact same game but smaller? Let's find out. A game of intergalactic conquest for one to five players in a. Card box. So this is like literally in a like a little card box. Um, Mr. Mormo said, "Good evening, good evening, Mister." Um, yeah, and Slivers, how are you feeling? You've, how's your how's your tooth? Your tooth is hurting. So okay, so I'm curious. So it's everything in Tiny Epic Galaxies is, but smaller, and even includes the satellites and super weapons mini expansion. So basically. Okay, so this is Tiny Epic Galaxies, which is already only this big, and now they made it this big, and it's just the same game. I don't get this. I'm sorry. I don't understand this. Like, it was already small. Did we need a smaller version of this? Um, solo. There's more solo versions? Is that what it is? Um, no, can you solo that Proving Grounds? Yeah, you sure can. Um, okay. I mean, I like Tiny Epic Galaxies a lot. I just, I don't understand this at all. This is, I mean, I mean, whatever. It's made like 125 grand. So like, I can't really, I can't really knock them, but it's already a small game. I don't get why this needs to be smaller, but okay. Um, look at this guy with his handsome bastard. Um, okay. I mean, why not? Right. Uh, Alex, I've never been interested in Tiny Epic games. I feel like they would never get played. I really like Tiny Epic Quest. I honestly haven't been that much, that interested in them either. Um, and so are, are they doing them all? So have they already done this one? Are they just going to redo a Kickstarter for each one of these? Because honestly, that's kind of bootsy. <laughs> they should just make them all and do a Kickstarter for all of them at once, unless that's what they're doing. Is that what they're doing right now? Am I, am I just being, am I complaining about something that's literally already happening? Because if they're not, then they should not be doing a, a, an extra Kickstarter for every single one of these. So I've not played most of these. I've played Tiny Epic Galaxies. I want to play Tiny Epic Mechs. I like Tiny Epic Quest a lot. Although Tiny Epic Quest doesn't bug me, but it's like, it's it's a huge game. It takes up a huge footprint despite the fact that it's such a small game. Um, okay, cool. I mean, why not, right? Why not? Um, let me catch back up on chat. Uh, this said five years of company. I just got bumped to nine days of vacation. Wow, that's that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. I was with I was with my company for six years, and I just got bumped up to ten, and I was like freaking jazzed. <laughs> um, and Sliver said, just, "Still some pain, but not even close." That's that's good. That's good. Tweezers as a stretch goal. Ultra tiny is uh, it's a tiny request. Is not tiny. I completely agree, Slivers. It is massive that game. It is huge. It's actually kind of annoying how big it is. Um, most of them aren't tiny. Yeah, they just they packed onto a small box. So this Kickstarter, if they wanted to do literally all of them, like hey, here's all the games in their ultra tiny version, and the pledge manager, you can get whatever ones you want. Like okay, I want kingdoms, I want I want uh, tactics, and I want galaxies. Boom, boom. But if they um, are going to do a Kickstarter for each one, that's butt cheeks. I'm sorry. That's it's just it's just. I don't know. You should do it all at once. And honestly, I don't think this is necessary anyway, but whatever. Game Let's making bank off these. I mean, they've made so much money off these tiny epic games that, you know, who might have judged? <laughs> They're making super, super money. All right, so the next one on our list here is Fired Up, the arena game where you are the audience. I don't know what those words mean. Um, I've also, uh, one of our friends has a bunch of, he's got a bunch of these Kickstarters and he's been, uh, Talking to me about, ooh, I like the box art for this. Talking to me about printing them for him because he doesn't have a 3D printer. So I've been kind of, uh, I've been kind of uh, experimenting with it. And these kinds of things take a really, really long time to print. I was printing out like a cottage for it, 
it's been out the cottage, the roof for the cottage, and like there's a little door that goes with it. It's like 48 hours of printing. And I was like, whoa, that's just for one of these. I'm kind of like, at that point, I'm like, maybe you should just buy them <laughs> because they're going to take so long to print. Oh, Lordy. Uh, what's up, Hawks Skull? Tiny Epic Western is the same huge footprint for a small box. Yeah, they're, they're really an odd thing because they're tiny epic games are not that small i really like this box i don't know what's going on but i am a massive sucker for really bright stuff like this this kind of like weird futury kind of look i would when we i was mike um matthew and i were walking through the art section of um of gen con which has now become a uh a tradition for us we did that last year but this year we all come together and we set aside like an hour for us to just walk through the art area. And we just kind of chat and hang out and relax for a bit. And it's great. And uh, Matthew kept pointing out. He's like, you'll like this one. This is up your alley. And it was always a lot of this kind of stuff. I was like, damn, you're right. Like, I I, I think it's because I always want to do this kind of art. Like, I want my art to be like this. And, and I just, I don't do that kind of art. <laughs> I think I, I live by Gary's through like this. So this is from Birmingham. Um, Birmingham, the UK. So fired up the arena game where you are the audience. A cyberpunk arena game in which the players are not the fighters, but the audience. That's weird, but interesting. Witness the amazing highlights and get fired up. I like that. That's fun. Uh, so we're talking about vacation. American vacation time is off, is off and way behind the rest of the world. Pro productivity suffers too because we don't get enough time away. That is uh, very true. They say shorter work days and more vacation time makes you work actually way harder and uh, tends to make productivity go up a lot. But, you know, America. Um, okay, so I'm so curious. What the hell does this mean? So you're, you're not fighting. You're just in the audience. I mean, that's a cool take. I do cyberpunk. That's what it's called, cyberpunk. I really like cyberpunk stuff. And I think it's because I want to do cyberpunk art, and I don't and can't. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's a arena game which, oops, which the players, all the audience, not the fighters, use your influence disc dice rather to cheer or jeer the fighters, encourage them to run faster, fight better, even make them change their targets so that you can see some amazing highlights and leave the stadium fired up. Be careful, though. Since the other players may have totally different agendas, you need to make sure to adapt your energy to the right fighter at the right time. That is a cool take on something like this. And these are the fighters. This is... I really hope this is good because this is such a cool idea. These are different highlights, so a full block and a devastating hit, mixed feelings, and a wallop. Wallop's a good word. Wallop and dollop are both good words. Dollop, I feel like, perfectly explains what a dollop is, like a dollop of sour cream, just perfect. Said so Nick liked Sprite Colors so much, he was devastated they missed... Uh, Neom as neon. That's true. Misread neom as neon. Did I do that? <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, I do like bright colors quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very into the bright. This is, ooh, excuse me. This is cool. I hope this is good. I'm going to have to watch like a video on this um, later on because this is cool. So in the preparation phase, each player draws four highlight cards and chooses two. They will try to score this round. Okay. Then you, uh, in the influence phase, each player will roll the influence dice and then use them to influence different fighters. So you're putting all the different fighters and stuff. That's very, very cool. This art is dope, too. Look at this crap. What is this guy? It's like a weird bee thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then after everyone has used all their die, the fight, begin, the fight begins. In the battle phase, the fighters attack each other. Players score points according to how many of their highlights were executed. Very cool. Okay, okay. What, how weird is that? It's so weird. I'm. I, what, what's everyone? What's everyone thinking about this? Tantrum House. My computer is mega slow. I gotta. I gotta update this computer if we're gonna keep streaming from it because this one is so slow. So there are videos here you just can't see. Um, but that is very very cool. Twenty minutes in, Nick has made it through two Kickstarters. Sounds about right. I tell you, I, I talk a lot when I'm alone. I talk way more when I'm alone than I'm when, when I'm with Mike. Um, this one woman reminds me of like Jax from Mortal Kombat. It's the big metal arms. Um, this one's my favorite. I, I just I love the aesthetic of this of this robot lady dude. Very cool. I think this is cool. I hope this is dope. Um, because Tantrum House. One, 
Uh, very cool. Very, very cool. Not my eyeballs against it. Very cool indeed. Yeah, I, I think so. I think this is – what a cool take on that kind of game, like a big arena combat game, but you're not – I, I enjoy games. I like the idea of games of like you're just trying to influence things rather than actually do them yourself. Um, I find that to be uh, an interesting. I find that to be an interesting thing. I don't always want that in games, um, but I always find that to be an interesting uh, concept in games where you're not actually doing the things you're just trying to make other people do it, uh, and that is a very very cool way to uh, go for go through with that. Um, so as we said, no one is there to tell him to stop or focus. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. It, people ask a question. I'll start talking for like 20 minutes. That's why I enjoy doing, see, I'm sitting here talking again. That's why I enjoy doing things like art streams or mini painting streams, because I can still work and do the thing that people are watching and be talking the entire time. Whereas this, it's like, if we're going through a Kickstarter, I need to be talking about that, about what we're looking at. So if I want to talk about something else like this and go on a random tangent that no one actually cares about, I have to stop what I'm doing to do it. Uh, uh, Mr. Mormo said, sadly not for my playgroup. That is too bad. Uh, I would love to play that. I would love to try that game. All right, next one up is uh, Runestones and then Taxi Derby, which is a, a funny name to me. Runestones. The quest for the rings board game? Mm, that sounds like Lord of the Rings. Cthulhu, these coins, these, they always have these coins. Uh, they're always pretty darn cool. Runestones. Okay. Boom. Metro Maps. Taxi Derby. Ooh, that looks interesting. Okay, okay, fam. What did everyone do this weekend? I had a good weekend. I tried out airbrushing for the first time. It went okay. Um, let me see if I can grab these big longs. Ugh. So this is the dude I was airbrushing. I, I wanted... Just for base coating, I wanted to start. There we go. Hopefully that's a little better. I wanted to start uh, just doing a base coat and airbrush, just because it saves so much time than having to brush paint everything, which is usually how I do it. Um, and so I uh, airbrushed those bay moms right there. And I'm already pumped at how much faster that was. There's still other stuff I have to do, so all the other colors I'm just going to hand, hand paint because it's too small for me to airbrush them. But those dudes, the Age of Sigmar dudes, are mostly gold. So uh, I am happy that they I can just do that so much faster because that's just so much better in a way. All righty. Sorry, just getting a chat back. I was checking something real quick. Um, okay, Runestones. I like this cover. I like this cover. I'm a, I'm a big judging games by their cover kind of gal. Anyone else? I'm, I have a good cover. See, with books, have a good book cover. Don't judge a book by a cover, but everyone does. So have a good cover. Um, you have an annual company... Oh, Annual company party at the surfing simulator yesterday instead of game night. What do all those words mean? I don't know what any of those words mean. By the way, if you're enjoying this, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up. Help us a lot. Okay, so we got Rune Stone Summon Mr. Cal. Remember Mr. Cal, the rapper? Um, he was not very good. Creatures and enhance your power. Um, new game by designer Rudiger Dorn about the might of the druids. I love druids. Druids, my, mm, dwarves are my favorite like fantasy race. Druids are up there. I don't know if druids are considered a whole race on their own, but I love druids. Ooh, that's a pretty board. That's a very busy board, but a very pretty board. Ooh, Infinity Stones. What's up, Mike? Um... We play the new Century Eastern Mountains. Beautiful. But then you had to play Century, and that's the problem. <laughs> I got to stop talking so much crap about Century because Emerson Matsuchi is maybe the nicest person on the planet. <laughs> it's from Queen Games. All right. Is it from Queen Games? I didn't see the Queen box. Oh, I just didn't even notice the Queen part. Yeah. Um, Rosie knows. Rosie knows that, Mr. Cal. Shake your ass. Watch yourself. <laughs> Show me what you're working with. 
Oh, Mr. Cow. What's Mr. Cow doing right now? <laughs> druids are a class, not a race. That's why I said I'm not sure if they're a race. I like druids. Um, I was I was I was not quite sure. I was, I was like, I don't know if they're an actual race. Um, okay, so Runestones is a deck building hand management game by acclaimed designer Rudy Godon. Um, in Runestones, every card has a unique number on it. Two cards are always played together, and the higher number card is removed from the player's deck. That's interesting. You have to be careful which cards you buy and how you play them, not to lose your best cards. Players will use their cards to gather yems, forge them into artifacts, and then combine those into runestones, which grants you special abilities for the rest of the game. The more artifacts used in making a runestone, the more points it scores, so players must decide whether it would be best to gain abilities early or save to score more points. That's interesting. I like that. Um, ooh, Dutch played Niobari. said, Drudes. Niobari, I'm sorry uh, uh, you, you fell, brother. That sucks, man. I hope you're feeling okay. Um, Dutch always said, played Grim Forest, Robinson Crusoe, Mystery Tales, Cuba Libre, and Legendary Encounters Alien. Has anyone played the new Legendary, that 007 one? Because I'm curious about that. Jason, I judge almost exclusively by the cover. That's so fair. That's so fair. Mr. Cal fell off stage last night. <laughs> what? Is that true? Um, no, I, I'm aware. I'm aware that's what you did this weekend, Diz. I was just like, you went to a place with a surfing simulator? <laughs> that is very cool. Um, okay, so it's... It's in an advanced stage of development, including both artwork and gameplay. It is planned for a general release at the Eschen Spiel Fair, Spiel in October of 2019. Our goal is to deliver the game to backers right before the fair starts so they can be first to get it. So if it's coming out at Essen, why are you kickstarting it? Hey, cool. Well, good question, Nick. Um, I do like this. This is very pretty. It does look like it does look like a, like a really like natural. Like if, if Thanos became like, nah, man, I'm only using natural materials nowadays. He's like, just carved this out of wood and then made the Infinite Gauntlet out of it? Okay. 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 <laughs> he looks so sad. Why is he so sad? Summon Mystic Cal creatures to aid you on your quest. Do okay, not good, but okay. All right, now, I'm sorry, brother. That sucks. Um, okay, we got Leaf People. We got Goat Man. Great. Uh, we got a Sassy Dragon. Love it. Ooh, that's cool. The art in this game is great. Ooh, that's scary. There's different wild. That's just crazy. Okay. Okay, we got components. So, ooh, yems. Did you hear Rob K? What? I don't know what that means. Um, I think Queen Games does this every year. They, they do very often. Uh, ooh, that's cool looking. Look at it. It just goes like, boo, in like that. That's cool. I like that. That's a cool board. Very busy. But again, I don't mind when boards are busy like this because this is all just art. I think the only thing that matters is this path and these spots. So I don't mind busy boards if the parts that actually matter are laid out very clearly. Um, that is very, very cool. I really like that, that look. That is freaking baller. Um... Oh, did I hear Rob Layfield is finally fulfilling his Kickstarter for one comic issue after seven years? I did not, but that is metal. <laughs> um, Runestones, Nocturnal Creatures. Oh, that's where this, this lady came from. Cool, cool, cool. I like the fact that her hair is different in each one. I think that's a very, very, very cool thing to do that. Um, Queen Games are doing Kickstarts for a U.S. release opportunity, I believe. But at this point, can't they just release the U.S.? Do they still have to do Kickstarts? I mean, I mean, I don't really care. It's totally fine. But it's just like, it seems like they're big enough where they, they totally could. Um, what game that goes on Kickstarter from a publisher has not had great art or components? At this point, anything that's big does, uh, which I think is very good. Very cool. This seems cool. Um, I like the idea that, like... You're playing two cards, and um, uh, you're higher of your two cards. You know, like this one's 51. The higher the two cards goes away, which I'm, I'm assuming those cards are better. So does your hand get crappier at the end, throughout the game? That's cool. I like that. It's, the game seems honestly pretty cool. Um, and I'm just, I'm digging the art. I'm digging this board. It's got a very, <laughs> oh, that's like the designer bundle. I was like, what? That's right, because this is all from Rudy Dorn. 
Um, that's cool. Very cool. Downsies. What's everyone thinking about this this queen game right here? Seem pretty cool. Um, it's a pre-order model. They get a rough idea how they need to print. Yeah, I agree. Um, just not huge on Kickstarter being a pre-order machine. Uh, but it's whatever. What's up, Chalmerstad? How you doing, bro, bro? Okay, so Taxi Derby. I just want Crazy Taxi, the video game, turned into a board game. With that same voice, I want to act him so the guy can be like, Crazy Taxi. The guy who sounds like he's a DJ at a strip club, you know? And he's like, come on down to the stage. Crazy Taxi. I loved that game as a kid. I sucked it. I was horrible at Crazy Taxi. I don't know what it was. I was so bad at that game, but I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Um, what am I? Who am I? What's going on? What's going on? Um, don't need that open. Um, I do like Istanbul, so probably like the game. Very cool. All right, so this is a race to pick them and deliver. Checks out. If you were a taxi game that's not pick and deliver, that'd be very confusing. I deliver passengers without pushing your luck too much in a sixty-minute board game for two to five players. Push your luck too. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you're a taxi driver in the city of Exact. Cool. The city is growing to an unprecedented pace and the arrival of Zip Taxi, a new driving app, has upended the traditional taxi industry. <laughs> so it's just Uber. Uh, everyday drivers like yourself compete to provide the best service and attract the highest paying customers. Do you have what it takes to come out on top in this crazy taxi derby? That's great. Great name. I love it. Um, what? This is so weird. I love it. Um, okay, so medium weight pick. I like to put the weight in there. That's kind of cool. Pick the lever, put your luck. About 60 minutes can be enjoyed by the whole family inside the box. Okay, I like the different maps. This is, and I like the way these look. This is this is very nice. Four game boards. All right. These are the different taxis. I want to be Daisy every single time. Uh, no, no one else. Three women, two men. Very cool. Love it. Ooh, the little taxis. Very cool. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm getting into the biddies today. Uh, 56 passenger titles, the president? Interesting. <laughs> wow. What high profile, what high profile uh, customers. You can get traffic tickets. I love that. All right. All right. And the deluxe edition. Oh my gosh. Can you put all four boards together? Or do you always put all four boards together? That would make sense. Um, okay. And, and a, there's a deluxe and a collector's edition? That's confusing. Okay. Honorary producer? Do you get your name in it or something like that? Your name immortalized on one passenger. So Bob Bobberson gets to be one. Okay. Tell me how the game plays, though. Okay. 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 Try to get to the gameplay. Trying to get okay. Here we go. So player, the player with the most money at the end of the game, money is collected when players pick up passengers and drop them off around the city. Checks out. Uh, passengers in the city of Exad are very picky and require taxis with specific upgrades. That's kind of cool. Um, each upgrade can only be purchased while your taxi is empty, so players must plan their strategy carefully to weigh whether it is better to upgrade or pick up an especially lucrative passenger on their turn because someone else might pick them up. That's very cool. I like that. Um. Speaking of taxi derby, it seems like taxidermy is significantly underused theme in board games. I completely agree. Thunder McScruggins. Oh, that'd be a good name. I would definitely name it Thunder McScruggins. Thunder McScruggins is the best of us. So um, in many pick and deliver games, a player is limited by the number of spaces they can move in their turn. In the city of Exat, the speed limit is four spaces. However, a player can move as many spaces as they want on their turn. For each space move over the speed limit, patrol car has a higher chance of catching you. That's very cool. That's where the push your luck comes into play. I like that. Um, and you, if you don't, if you play it safe, you can move the patrol car kind of wherever you want. I like that. I think that's, I like the push your luck aspect of it. All right. This sounds fun. I, I like pick up and deliver games a lot. Um, I like the fact that you can go around and upgrade your stuff. I think that's very, very cool. I like the fact that certain passengers you can't pick up unless you have certain upgrades because they're really weird and picky about it. Uh, Big Al, Big Al, Soy Barn. Shouts out, Toy Story 2. Um, okay, cool. 
What's everyone think about Taxi Derby? This seems fun. I actually, I this actually seems like a a, a pretty good banger. Modular game board. Oh, it's confusing. Oh, it's confusing. So you always use all four, but you can kind of put them however you want. That's very very cool. I like that. What's this one swinging at? What are we? Uh, we're at seventeen, so we funded. That's good. That's good. Um, for the base game is thirty four. That's pretty damn cheap. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's really good. And that's American. Wow, thirty four. That's that's pretty damn cheap. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's good. That's cool. All right, Taxi Derby. That that is that is okay in Nick's book. All right, we're four in, thirty seven minutes in. We are making a great pace. Ten minutes per. All right, so the next one is DBG uh, Water Warfighter Battle Packs, not Water Fighters. Water Fighters would be more fun though. Um, and so again, I'm passing up stuff because I'm only going um, on stuff that is on our list. Again, you can see our list and you can talk about in the channel for it, in our Discord, which ones you want us to look at. Um, oh, the next one is Sleeping Gods. I am very excited to look at Sleeping Gods. Honestly, we passed by uh, Mr. Lockett's um, booth at Gen Con a lot and, and said hi to him at one point. We didn't get, I didn't get a chance to, to look at Sleeping Gods at all, although talking about good covers, Sleeping God has got a banger of a cover. What's it at now? Half a million? Checks out. <laughs> Ryan Lockett is, is a one of the kings of, of Kickstarter. Um, now everybody said, how is this medium weight? The, uh, what are the hold of pants? Damn it. Just bought these freaking pants. Um, how is it medium weight? I don't know. It seemed pretty medium weight. A tax, talk about taxi derby. It seemed like, I mean, not heavy by any stretch of the imagination, but needing to decide whether or not to pick stuff up or upgrade. Also depends on how hard it is to upgrade stuff. I don't know. Um, All right, so this is Battle Packs for Warfighter. I don't even know what Warfighter is, but great. This right here is horrendous looking, though. Um, okay. So Warfighter is a fully solitaire, cooperative, tactical, card-based game for one to six players where you select and equip squads of soldiers and execute the mission by fighting your way to achieve the objective. It is available in modern and World War II eras. Cool. And each expansion set adds to the incredibly deep game play narrative with new scenarios, missions, and soldiers. Okay. Okay. So I guess these are all different battle packs, as they say. Okay. Specific. So they. This has been requested a lot of specific historical battle packs. That is very cool. I like that about war games. Like this is this specific battle. And things are made up for this. I mean, a lot of war games do that. This is the Battle of Britain, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I, I think that's always been a cool thing. It takes everything you need to recreate the battle. Very, very cool. That's cool that it's like a solitaire cooperative game where you're all kind of doing your own thing, but it is a cooperative thing. I think that's very, very cool. This isn't really my kind of game, but... But nonetheless, um, I don't really... Showing you how to do it. Cool, cool, cool. It's actually this is actually not a bad thing to have your page. Like, hey, this is exactly how you do this. You did it! Yay! Okay, okay. Ooh. Card crates. Very cool. All right. Cool. I mean, this, again, this is super, super not my kind of game, but a lot of people like these kinds of games. And this seems like a really cool version of it, a really cool way to go about it. There's a lot of stuff for it, as you can see. Um Cool. Lots of stuff to get. Lots of stuff that they unlocked, all this kind of stuff. All right. I like it. Cool. DVG Warfighter Battle Packs. Um, all right. Next up is going to be... I did not know that, Diz. Is that true? I don't think you ever told us that one. You probably did. I just forgot. So, wait, hold on. What was it? Sorry, Diz dropped a truth bomb on me. 
said, I said this going, you know, discord.thebrothersmurf.com goes to the same place. Get the F out of my F. How do you spell Murph? Dude, that's cool. I didn't know that. That is way easier than the way I've done it for the rest of my life. Diz, you're way cooler than me. <laughs> Thank you for setting I'm guessing you're the one who set that up. Um, that is so much easier. Thank you for that. <laughs> that is so much easier. All right, so now just go to discord.thebrosmurf.com. Um, I'm actually going to put that in here and copy it so I can do it. Discord.thebrosmurf.com. Oh, man, that's freaking easy. God. This is one smart Chuck. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, cool. That is awesome. I'm going to use that from now on out. That is super easy. This is a dope ace cover. God, I love Ryan Lockett's art. Did anyone see Ryan Lockett's uh, Game Toppers mat? It was a banger. So this is an immense open world storybook game from Ryan Lockett. So it took like 14 seconds to set that up, Diz. No, it didn't. It took 13 years. I know how it goes. I don't understand how these things work. Look at this beautiful man. Beautiful man. This dude is like 96, and he has not aged a day. Um, so in Sleeping Gods and Expansion, Tides of Ruin, you and up to three friends become Captain Sophie Odessa and her crew lost in a strange world in 1929 on your steamship, the Manticore. You must work together to survive, exploring mysterious islands, meeting new characters, and seeking out the totems of the gods so that you can return home. Uh, Miss, you getting that, Matt? That Matt is a banger. Um, this Brandon person doesn't exist. Yeah, Diz is going to change his name. God, I like how freaking pretty. I just love that. I love, I love art, like sea art, um, S-E-A, where you see, you can see like a ship, and you see the water line, you see below the water line, there's like a big leviathan coming out of kind of Jaws style. Love that kind of art. And this is very much right up my alley. So this is, is this, I, I honestly don't know too much. Is this, is this essentially kind of um, uh, near and far, kind of 2.0? Not 2.0, that's the wrong way of putting it. But you know what I mean, like along that? So, Laura, massive open worlds in a game atlas of connecting maps. Okay, so it seems like it is. It includes a novel length, a novel length storybook to read as you explore, filled with danger, discovery, and intrigue. Um, I can't wait for this game. Solo story, sea adventure. Lots of interesting. Yeah, Jason, this this seems like a banger because I we really liked Near and Far, um, and I think I like this theme even better. Level to crew members. Over a 10 to 20 hour campaign, play multiple campaigns to unlock secrets and discover hidden treasures. It may take many campaigns to explore the entire world. I believe that. The cooperative play allows players to yump in or out with ease, and the flexible game system allows you to stop and save your game anytime. That's one thing, is because when we got uh, the Amber, uh, what's it called? The Amber Mines? Is that what the expansion for Near Far was? The one that made it cooperative? I was like, I never want to play this game competitively again. It was way more fun cooperatively. So I'm glad that this one is just straight up cooperative. Aren't Near and Far and Bubble Blow super similar? Not really, honestly. They have similar names, but they don't play anything alike, really. And uh, the story element even then isn't very uh, similar. Because in Above and Below, the story system is just random. You just randomly get two things, two numbers, and then you just find that number in the book and then read that aloud, but it's completely random. Whereas Near and Far, it's an overarching story, and the you go to different spots on the map, and the story you're talking about is... It has to do with that part of the map. So if you're like up in the mountains, it's like, oh, up in these mountains, da 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 da. And it's it's frankly better. Amber Mines. Okay. Did I say that? I think I said that. Thank you, Jason. Um this sounds cool, man. This sounds cool. Look at that cover. God, that's a banger cover. Sorry. I'm just so obsessed with this cover. He had a big like backdrop at a at um uh Gen Con of this, and it was just like get out of here. Near and Far aren't random in a book. No, they're not. Um, which is why I think once Near and Far came out, everyone's kind of like, oh, cool. Man, I don't need to play Above and Below anymore. <laughs> which is kind of how we were. I don't think we've played Above and Below since we got Near and Far. Bunch of stuff, all the stuff. I love the booklet. Oh, that's such a... See, it's one because I recently did a Metagame Minute talking about how I don't need to play Near and Far ever again. And I stand by that. I don't. But I do like that story. And I like that game. Ooh, we may end up having to get this one. I don't think we'll, I don't know if we'll back it, but I, I we might have to get it uh, when it comes out on retail. Um, because 
and the Tides of Ruin. That's also a banger cover. God, he's so good at what he does. What a beautiful man. Um, I'm guessing this is not final. Uh, man, that's cool. Ryan Lockett seriously is arguably the most impressive person in all board gaming. Because he's a publisher, he's like the one who runs his own company. He does all the art for his games. He writes most of the stories, and he makes games, and they're good, they're good games. I mean, it's just that dude, he's bananas. Ryan Lockett makes no sense. Um, okay, how's everyone feeling about this? So it has a lot of RPG elements here, too, with Sleeping Gods. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm trying to catch up on the chant. Um, this is the one that I'm having FOMO for. Everyone is talking about, but I just don't see it getting a lot of play in my group. We aren't good with campaign games, so I'm on the fence. That's, Chalby, that's basically where we are. Uh, we don't play campaign games very much. We just, Mike and I like to bounce around a lot with our gameplay. Um, we play this game, then we play this game. It's, it's hard for us to get a campaign game to go through it. We really need someone to play it through with that's not us. Um... So if we're going to play it with like Crookie or like Hannah and Jimmy or something like that, and we could like guarantee that we'll play it. That's why I said like, you know, we'll probably wait till retail. 70 bucks. See, this is 70 bucks. But here's the thing. The art's great. And there's so, this game is massive because of the sheer amount of story stuff. Totally worth 70 bucks. Um, that's a discount Jack Burton right there. Uh, yeah. So one thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Jack said, one thing about the booklet for Sleeping Gods is that some of the options are only available if you've collected certain items. So if you don't have them, you can go back when you do. That's very cool. And Jason, I'll volunteer remote in. Uh, down, down. Yeah, so this one, it's one of those... Uh, so I wonder how many are rewritten from the storybook above below. I don't think any of them... A lot of them you can tell are kind of inspired because it's in the same world. But I don't know if any of them are legitimately just straight up rewritten. And if they were, like, whatever. There's a bunch of different stories, so... There's a bunch of like side quests in here and far. I'm guessing there's side quests in this. This looks dope. This I would probably say I'm more excited for than any of his games that I've seen, um, which is actually saying a lot considering I, I like Ryan Lockett's games a lot. That looks like a banger. I'm pumped. That's cool. Um, I believe this is our next one is Dice Friend. But yeah, that one looks cool. But again, it, as, as Chalbasad said, I don't know if that if it would just get played enough for if it was just me and Mike. I just don't know if we get played enough. I just don't know. We just bounce around too damn much. Um, okay, so Dice Friend is next, and the ex, next one is Fiasco, which Mike and I played with the incredibly lovely Heart Board Games at uh, Dice Tower Con, and it was stupid fun. Um. Um, there it is. Meeple's Corner, UK. Hey, come down to Meeple's Corner. That's not how people from the UK sound. Um, and the next one I'm just going to grab right now is Explore It. Raid Area 51, the game. Really? Someone is trying to capitalize on that? No. No. <laughs> That's my like favorite thing is like whenever an elections happen, like a presidential election, all of a sudden like all these games come out about it. I'm just like, who's buying these? <laughs> I just don't get it. All right, where is Hexplore? Hexplore? Come on, did I pass it? Did I pass it? Oh my gourds! Great aim. Don't even care. Oh. Um. Did I, did I pass it? Did I pass it? Explore it. Yay. I know, I, know, I know that one's for you. Did I pass it? We're going to this too. <laughs> Gentlemen, can get bag end in miniature form. Yeah, I want it. <laughs> I pass it. Damn it. Um, okay, there's actually been a lot of the games that we've seen that we've looked at have been pretty cool looking, actually. I'm actually, oh, here it is, here it is. Okay, Das Friend. Fight them. 
Sally the Area 51 looked pretty horrid. Uh, I'm, I cannot tell you how not surprised I am. <laughs> you would provide links, yeah, but it's, it's easier for me to scroll it and keep it all organized. It probably isn't. I don't know. I should probably just try it that way. All right, so dice friend. So you have a dice bag. Very cool. A dice tray or a dice crown. That's actually kind of cool. Um, roll silently, transport easily, and take your dice anywhere you want. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Simple to use. Sorry. Simple to use. Durable dice tray that transforms into a dice bag with a couple of snaps. Snap, snap, snaps. Cool, cool. All right, I like it, I like it. Ooh, these are pretty, very pretty. Um, okay. I mean, it seems like it's just, it's it's little bit bowls, dice trays that are, uh, you can kind of make whatever shape and stuff you want. I'm down, that sounds pretty cool. Nah, slivers, that's not possible. Unfortunately, it's impossible to do that. Um, okay. I'm down. I mean, these seem cool. I don't have much use for something like this, but I think this is very, very cool. I do like uh, people who like carrying their dice around on their, on their, you know, on their hip. Um, ooh, that's a cool one. I like the alien one. All right. Very cool. These are nice. All right, let's go look at Fiasco. I had to look at it. I'm entranced by the Facebook group. Group around Storm Area 51. Stupid fun. Yeah, I'm... When's this supposed to happen? The Storming Area 51? Is it soon? I feel like it's got to be soon. By the way, if you're enjoying this, please give this video a thumbs up. Those thumbs up help quite a bit. Load your stupid computer. Um. Yeah, that whole Area 51 thing is interesting. <laughs> Let's, let's go with interesting. Um, all right, Fiasco. So this was, it's, it's essentially a, a giant improv game. I mean, I, it, that's mostly what it is, to be completely honest. Uh, so Fiasco, the cinematic game of plans gone wrong. That is accurate. A new card-based edition of Fiasco, the classic game of powerful ambition and poor impulse control. Dan's almost at 100 grand. That's great. Good for them. So, so, so it's been 10 years since we first published our original tabletop game, Fiasco, and we're incorporating everything we've learned about stupid disasters, poorly timed plans, and precious things on fire in this new edition. Okay. So what's Fiasco game? The original Fiasco award-winning GM-less game for three to five players designed to be played in a few hours with a six-sided dice and no preparation. Very true. During game, you engineer and play out stupid, disastrous situations, usually at the intersection of greed, fear, lust. It's like making your own Coen Brothers movie. That's a very good point. Um, September 20th, that's when it is. Uh, carrying dice on your hips seems super nerdy. It is super nerdy. But at the same time, if I met a girl and she just like had a, a dice bag on her hip, just like out at like a Starbucks, I'd probably propose to her. Um, just because I'd be that just absolutely enamored with it. I'd be like, that's dope. You're that nerdy? Dope. I love nerdy people. I want to be friends with anyone who carries dice around with them at all times <laughs> in some elaborate bag. I want to be friends with every single one of those people. Um, yeah, so in this one, you're rolling dice and like creating essentially a bunch of different um, scenarios. You have characters, and then you're, you're acting them out, honestly, in kind of like a long-form improv game. Uh, it, it's, it's very, it's a really weird game, but it is very, very fun. So you have a bunch of needs, you have a bunch of locations, you have a bunch of, uh, you have a bunch of relationships and a bunch of objects. So there's a lot of times it's kind of a mystery thing. So the object is like, uh, syringes of human growth hormones. Uh, the relationship is your family, parent and stepchild. You need to get off on primo pipe weed. Weird. And then location is all taking place in Michelle's tavern, help wanted, all shifts, okay? And the pop takes place in Poppleton. Um, 
and so it's it's one of those things where it's like it's uh it's just fun it's just but it's one of those things you really have to get into and be comfortable just being dumb and and um you know you kind of have to you're again you're doing a lot of different like improv kind of stuff it's a kind of perfect game for like mike and i we enjoy doing it we, we may want to um uh go ahead and get it at some point for uh streams because it was it's very fun to do it's very very fun to do all right cool good old fiasco this is one that's not on the list but i'm looking at it because it's kind of lord of the rings themed nailed it uh games workshop is a bunch of like lord of the rings minis that are for some game that i don't actually want to play but i just want all the minis because i've been mega into painting recently like just mega mega into it i think one of the reasons is is because I've been painting a lot of Age of Sigmar stuff, but I'm through like the big batch painting I have to do. So now I get to kind of spend some time having some fun. I want the, I just want this. I want this. I, I don't care so much about these. I want this. Um, highs for the show are on Discord. That is very, very true. Um, okay. More than 100 different halflings? What? For you to build your very own personal collection of little knee crushers. Oh, that's cool this is not good for me to look at it'd be better to understand to say that i like halflings these little mad badges are a favorite thing of mine ever since a friendly teacher gave me that halfling children's book <laughs> i'm guessing they can't say the hobbit um after successful campaigns with some new releases coming up we thought it'd be the perfect time to return to kickstarter and offer short people to tall people <laughs> please join me in celebrating the third breakfast See, I, I want them like Lord of the Rings themed. These guys aren't Lord of the Rings themed. Uh, the miniatures, the miniatures are very cool though. They're on goats. Are they on goats? Oh, they're on goats. That's tight. Uh, Dave Phillips, you're you're crazy. Oh wow. I just want I want this. I don't care about that. I want bag end. I want bag end. I want to make a giant bag end diorama in my house. Okay. So you can pick and mix. I'm guessing they're having all the old ones um, available. Okay, so 400 bucks, you get the army. You get 40 plus 40 packs of infantry. Wow. 10 packs of Calgary Ogres War Machines. Wow, that's a lot. Um, do they have, like, bag end? I want that. Here's an NPC's. The Halfling Adventurers, those are the ones they're showing in that thing. I want back end. Oh, this is disappointing me now. This is disappointing me. That's all I want. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm over it now. Um, Armor of the war goats, the enemy <laughs> enemies have hazelnut cookies. Fair. All right. So this is Explore It or Tremors, uh, the Sands of Shirax. Mike and I are going to do a uh, Terror Below stream soon. Pretty pumped about it, I'm not going to lie. Um, enter the Wastes um, to explore a rich world caught in turmoil. Build heroes, power them up, and face hundreds of challenging scenarios. Done 150 grand. It's doing it just fine. So Hexplore is a game about, like, hexes? I don't know. It's some garbage that Silvers likes. <laughs> That's not true. It seems very, very cool. Hexplore is a cooperative hero-building adventure board game system. Sands of Shrox is our third title in Explore Universe. Um, Silvers, have you already backed this? I'm going to go ahead and say you've already backed this. It is both a standalone game and an expansion for our previous volumes. Yes, I love when they do that. Um... Journey into an entrancing land filled with danger and intrigue. Interact within a rich world, directing your actions toward one of four endgame scenarios. Very cool uh, art. God, that art's pretty. That's very, very cool. I really like the, the kind of sand theme. Yeah, so it's in these big hex pieces, right? That's very cool. This does seem cool. So a titanic creature. It is back. I had the first two as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sir. Call that one. So a, rat, a titanic creature called Tremors deposits um, crystal towers on the map where your adventure unfolds. Make your way across the desert to perform missions to work with ca caravan masters, gain employment, or even enter the gladiatorial arenas. Cool. All right. 
Okay, cool, 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 cool. Tight, 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 tight. So, gave it a corporate fantasy themed hero building, variable hero powers, uh, organic and customizable hero advancement. Very, very cool. Um, several alternative playing styles. That's very cool. So, quick play, double up, marathon, solo play. Cool. Can play with these, I'm guessing, the first two of them. This does seem pretty cool. Um, yeah, because you create your own heroes. This one does seem uh, very, very cool. God, look at look at that. Is this Kevin Bacon? Is that what that is? Probably Kevin Bacon. Cool, but it's also banger. I'm not sure if it's a banger, but it's cool. Um, that's the it's like and druids. Are they druids? Very cool. Very cool. It's getting close to a banger. I like this guy. Um yeah, the art of this game is pretty banger. It's more than cool. Dr. Manhattan, this is like if the thing and Dr. Manhattan had a baby. That's literally exactly what this is. What's it called? Dr. Thing Hatton? Called it. Hilarious joke, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Also like her hair. Um, and so, yeah, see, this is cool. It's got such a cool look. Um, whoa. That's a big-ass grasshopper right there. Look at that grasshopper. Ooh. Very cool. This is cool. This is cool. What's the playtime on this, Slibbies? If you're playing like, like a normal game. Look, Tremors, this is Kevin Bacon. This is Reba. Tremors is a great movie. Um, all right, cool. Dope. This looks tight. All right, very, very cool. What was, is that a big ass? What is it called? Pang? Oh, what are they called? Pangalores? That's not the right word. Pang? What the? Oh, I don't know what those things are called. They're like armadillos, but they it starts with a damn P. Mm, something. I don't know. It doesn't literally say right here. Does it say right here? It is not. Okay, cool. One, one and a half hours? That's not bad. That's really not bad. It is a campaign either. Yeah, I did know that, and I think that's really cool. Very cool. Pumped. That's awesome. All righty. Let us go on. So next one is Oh My Gourds. Oh, Oh My Gourds is on here. Great. I wanted to look at that one. So we have Oh My Gourds. Oh my gourd, and then the Lost Adventures, all in one 3D printable adventures. Very cool. I am printing <laughs> a very, very large bust of Sigmund Freud right now, if anyone wants to know. <laughs> it's for Mike's play. I don't know why they need it. <laughs> but I am doing like an 18 hour print of Sigmund Freud. Because <laughs> why not? Um,. What's the next one? The Lost Adventures, the 3D printed ish. Um, nah. Okay. Where is there? It is. Oof. Whoa. Bananas. That married life. <laughs> That's probably not a very good game, but I like the name. <laughs> Um, Mary Lives Again that ruins more marriages than infidelity. That's dumb. Um, Pangolin. Okay, I was right. Pangolin. Did I say Pangalore? I was close. If I make it to Dice Tower West, I'll make you play with me. I'm down, Slivers. Super down. Um, I'm surprised how many people have never heard of Pangolins. They're super cute. They're super, super cute. Yeah, everyone needs to go to Dice Tower West. Dice Tower West is a banger. Okay, oh my door. From idea to Kickstarter in seven days. Obviously not final art. I actually like this art. They could have kept with that. One of my best friends is from Durham. All right. This is interesting. What is this at? Four grand out of 500? Dope. Oh my gourds. You take on the role of rival gourd farmers. Classic. God, that seems this theme is overdone. Um, farmers are all vying for the best gourd prize at the upcoming state fair. In order to win the state fair's coveted prize, the farmers need to go to their rival's farm to uncover the darkness and smash all the best gourds. Fun. Um, each farmer starts with gourds numbered one through ten. The place plays in a series of one verse one confrontations. There's each confrontation. The players choose a gourd to protect from all attacks. 
They put this card face down in front of them. Each player tells the other which of their opponent's gourds they'll be smashing, if not already smashed and protected. So basically you're smashing gourds. Okay. Um, okay. Why not? I love it. Um, okay. Oh, they did rap gods? Oh, cool. Okay. Fun. I love the fact that it's just like this seven day. Okay, so both Matt and Omari um, have been making board games for a while, so they spent a lot of time together in cars driving to board game conventions. On one such drive to Knoxville, Tennessee, for its fifth annual board game day last Friday, they decided to design a game right there in the car because they were bored. After a few hours of discussion and mental math, Oh My Gourds was born. <laughs> cool. What fun. Um, that's cool. I love it. Okay. Very cool. What fun. I like that. That's good. Good for that. Um, by the way, if you ever like this, give this video a thumbs up. Why not? I'm going to keep on saying it. The Lost Adventure. So this is an all-in-one 3D printable Y Adventures. Um, okay, so this is more 3D printable stuff. It's very cool. Big ass owl bear. Love it. This is a very large dragon. Again, I really think uh, this is the future for a lot of mini stuff. You know, it's just just print out STL files because you have super low goals and then crush those goals, and it's it's great. Okay. Okay, so they got a couple new stretch goals. Just saying that. Eh, let's look at the stuff. Let's look at the stuff. So different kind of three miniature Kickstarter that includes a collection of pretty premium three D printable mini miniatures, terrain, and proofs, along with RPG adventures and maps created specifically for those three D printable models. That's cool. Make it easier ever to use what you print and minimal planning required. That's very cool. I like they have kind of a game with it. So what are we making? All right. Let's get to these ones. Cool. All right. I still haven't done any like mini painting, like real, not mini painting, sorry, mini uh, printing. I have not really done any mini printing. Um, and I actually would like to, can we, I wanna see what, we're, what we have. Okay, here we go. I wanna see them actually printed out though. Okay, so we got the horde. All right. I mean, this is absolutely crushing. These guys are terrifying. Jeez. Those ghouls are ghoulish. <laughs> I got one down vote. Hilarious. It's like one of those things. If that was a joke, that's a hilarious joke. And if it wasn't a joke, that's somehow funnier. Um, the Thieves Guild. Uh, Rivenous the Watcher. Okay. That's a very large... So got trees. These are he's a lot of detail on those leaves too. That's a man, oh man, that's cool. A lot of times, a lot of trees, trees are hard. I, I really like these too. These stone bridges, these are awesome. Uh, ooh, little bushes. Mm, I like waterfalls. Cool. I think I've seen like three printable waterfalls before. And then we got a bunch of terrain and you know just that stuff. Very cool. And they got maps. I think this is cool. I like, I, I fully, <laughs> the, the, the down bow went away. That's hilarious. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> uh, I love the fact that the, the 3D printing thing is, is uh, the down bow is not banger. The down bow is not banger. You're right. <laughs> um, cool. I love 3D printed stuff. I think it's very, very cool. I think it's a, um, I think it's a, a, an awesome thing that is happening more and more on Kickstarter. Okay. So we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left. We got uh, Mokuru Card Game. Hanging Kittens. Cool. So I understand that there are kittens that are hanging, not like, hey, let's go hang some kittens. It's a weird name. That's a, that's a dangerous name. 
Uh, is it Mo Mokuru? Mokuru, Mokuru. Uh, more dice, always great. Here we go. I would love to have like a million dollars and just buy a bunch. I just have an entire wall of dice, just every color, every, and just be like, hey, we're playing this game. Pick your dice. That'd be very cool. Um, and the next one is Adventure Tactics, a co-op tactics game for one to five players. Adventure Tactics. Okay. Um, am I drinking chocolate milk? No, I'm drinking uh, Starbucks Cafe Latte because... I don't know. I just I was I went to go grab something to drink and it looked good for some reason. Kittens with hangovers. That that would be a good game. Um, this is what I'd like to see more of, especially three D printed is uh, bases, really cool bases for minis. That would be cool. That's a good idea. Someone do that. Diz, you do. Uh, you play Call of Duty, right? You're a, a, co a COD, CAD person, whatever it's called. Uh, make it. Make it now. Ooh, here we go. All right. So Mokuru card game. I don't know what this is. You can have a dice wall at your game cafe. That would be cool, except for I don't trust that any of those dice would stay. I think they'd all get stolen. Um, what is what is going on here? A new type of board game that puts your mind, hands, even friendship to the test. Um, that's from Hong Kong. Cool. They're, wow. Hong Kong money is worth a lot less than our money. For, that's a lot less. Wow. Okay. Um, is it Hong Kong dollars? What, what's the money in Hong Kong? Does anybody know? Top of your head? I'm just curious. I love money from different places. Hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> um... Okay, so what is this? What is going on? No, no, no. So two years ago, Mokuru the Amazing Desk Toy was funded on Kickstarter. The simple wooden stick has endless possibilities. Players can come up with their own tricks or master the existing one. So it's like a, like a fidget spinner. What games did I miss? Uh, uh, Howie, uh, all of them. Most of them. The big ones, What you probably missed the big ones were... Um, the Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies, uh, we really liked Fired Up, that looked really, really cool. Rune Stones, Taxi Derby was really cool. Sleeping Gods was probably the biggest one. Uh, and then Hex Floor was probably also the other biggest one. Hong Kong's Dollars. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was Hong Kong Dollars. Okay, so you're, you're doing cool stuff with them? I don't know what's going on. Um, we learned that they already have collected a number of popular tricks from fans that ranked them from the easiest, most challenging, to basically advanced and massive difficulties. Instead of just publishing a book, we've suggested turn it into a full board game with complete rules and tokens. Cool. But it's like, you, you do tricks with them? I love these. I don't know what the hell these are, but I love them. Um, I do CAD. Yeah, you play Call of Duty. We know. Um, but that artsy stuff is real hard slash different modeling software. You can do it. You're smart. You figured out how to make our Discord way easier to find. I believe in you, it is. So Hong Kong is dollars, but Yuan is also usually accepted. Is Yuan, is that like outside? Because Hong Kong I know is different than a lot of the rest of China, if I remember correctly, right? Because it was, I mean, you've got it, not even that long ago, uh, was... British, more or less. Um, I still don't know what's going on here, but I am very intrigued. Um, okay, so you're basically trying to do tricks with these uh, Mokuru sticks, I guess. And then I guess if you do them, you, you move up into the rankings of White Belt all the way up to Black Belt, which is cool. Um, okay, I mean, why not? Great. What, what is this... Uh, what is this priced at? Like, what's the money dollars for it? It's done 60 grand, which is not nothing. That is a good amount. Oh, Hong Kong. I was like, it's a $200? I was like, what? I was like, Mokuru, you are, you got to lower that price. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, so it looks like $25, uh, not 200 Okay, cool. I'm down. This looks awesome. 
or make tables out of resin and dice, uh, you are not wrong. I I need I need someone to buy me a house so I can uh, have a garage and have a wood shop inside of it because I want to do a bunch of cool nerdy uh, uh, mostly board game related woodworking projects stuff like that making a a table of like wood and then resin and dice you know have it like section it's like wood and then resin wood and resin and boom and have like bits and it have meeples i really want to make a, a bowl and wood turn it and i want it to be like like a, a cylinder of wood and then a cylinder of resin with like meeples in it and then wood then resin and kind of out in a bowl shape and then turn it um and then have that be like a bowl i just i have all these ideas and i need a wood shop and the know-how how to do it because i watch a lot of youtube but that doesn't actually mean i know how to do anything <laughs> um okay so the adventure tactics, uh, Dom, Dom, Damien's Tower. I don't know, it's so hard for me to say. Um, it's a co-op tactics game campaign for one to five players. I thought you, I, th I think you do, don't you, Slivers? Are you just trolling me? You are trolling me, that's right. Uh, you do as well, and I honestly keep forgetting it's still there. Um, I'm gonna be backing Sleeping Gods because Ryan Lockett might jam. Yeah, we're we're uh, fanboying out and fangirling out on Ryan Lockett uh, earlier. He looks like a very nice man. Does he look a nice guy? Oh, looks like a nice guy. Um, yeah, Sleeping Gods looks dope. It looks like a banger. Yeah, that's that's a good thing, Hawk Skull. That's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so an encounter-based campaign-driven cooperative deck builder. Begin your journey as one of the five basic classes and, and battle your way through branching campaign where you choose your own path in an attempt to overthrow the evil queen, Damian. I don't know why I can't say that. Um, with each encounter, you'll level up and unlock over 15 elite classes, adding new actions, equipment, and abilities. Will your team find the right combination of classes and powers in time to stop Queen Dum Damian? Let the adventure in. We're going to call her Dominique. <laughs> it's like I can't say her name. Um, I don't know how to do things either. You fake it till you make it. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to play with it. I just want to. Yeah, oh, it's like my dream is to have a wood shop and then just make weird nerdy stuff with it. Open a sweet ass Etsy shop. So it looks like all standees, which I don't. I don't hate standees, honestly. Um, make a good game way cheaper with standees instead of minis. I'm down. I'm guessing minis are a, a more expensive version. These are kind of cool minis. I like these kind of angular. I'm trying to think of, I don't know what this is called, but it's kind of like angular look to a lot of minis that they do. I think it's a good way to get by with not having super detailed minis like Simon, but still make them look really good. So banger count, is that 20 now or 21? Is that what your numbers you've been throwing in there? Is that's why? <laughs> I was wondering what those numbers meant. Um, okay. Banger count's at least at 20, at least at 20. Although I said I said Sleeping Gods is a banger. We already talked about that, so maybe it's only 19. Um, or we're just saying how many times I say it, because that's a lot more than 20. Okay. So it's again campaign game, these kind of, you know, these kinds of things where it's just a bunch of squares, you know. Um Firewall banger. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Queen Dominique is just Maleficent. Okay. All right. I want to go with the gameplay. Come on, gameplay. How to play. There we go. All right, so we have the rule book. Cool, cool. Can I? Okay, so ability characters. Players choose one of five starting characters. Cool. Uh, the Benjamin class, a rogue, fighter, cleric, archer, and wizard. Is an archer a whole class? I guess it probably could be. Um, at the end of an encounter, level up. Very cool. 21 different classes. Five levels within each class. Beast Trainer. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, choose a starting basic class. Okay. Completely player decided choices. So start as a fighter and want some heals. Want a fireball. Cool. I love it. Um... And mix and match. Oh, that's cool. They have the different art to show them. That's very cool. That's very cool. I like that. Where you can kind of just make them however you want. Banger. Um, 
Okay. So this is a game that like I would love to play, but uh, would never play. I, I, someone else would have to have it. I would never on my own play it. Um, or rather, Mike and I just wouldn't. This is campaign games as we were talking about earlier with Sleeping Gods. They just they're very hard to get played on our end. They're just very difficult. But this does look very very cool. Um, it's on Tabletop Simulator. I think that's such a brilliant thing for uh, Kickstarters and just games in general to do. Like, hey, this is very prototype, but you can like play it on Tabletop Simulator. I think that's super cool. Very cool. Tangent Mouse number two. Still counting it. Oh yeah, now, now they're really here. Um, all right, cool. Cool. All righty. So we got a couple more. We got Smartphone Inc. is next. Now I, th I think Smartphone Inc. is almost done. That's kind of cool. This is very like Tyranid, uh, Xenomorph kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Gay song of the board game. This is technically a family show, but I am so curious. I'm so curious. <laughs> so curious. Uh, okay. Smartphone, the import, export, definitive edition. Not a definitive edition. What does that even mean? Um, okay. Let's try and find where is Smartphone Inc. There it is. This looks like a HeroScape. Is that what the Heroes? I get HeroScape and HeroQuest mixed up. They are not similar. All right, let's find the other one. The Ultimate Token Holder. Cool. Import Export Definitive Edition. Giants are doing good. Giants are doing good. All right. Smartphone Inc. I have played Smartphone Inc. We played it at Dice Tower West. I liked it quite a bit. I looked at this campaign a little bit yesterday, actually, because I was over at our friend Hannah and Jimmy's house, and uh, we were talking about it because we were talking about um, he was wondering if he was just asking if he if we think he should back it, considering he would mostly be playing uh uh, Hannah and Jimmy both of you playing together. And which league? FIFA World Cup or International Exhibition Soccer. What? Stop listening to me, Siri. I don't even know what the hell you thought I was saying there, but I was not talking to you. Um and so um basically they were asking if it plays good enough at two player to get it, considering the mostly we're playing it at two player. And at least the basic game, how it was, I would say no. Um, they're 13 hours ago. They're two. This must have been a short campaign. Uh, they're at 200 grand. I'm actually surprised. I thought it'd do bigger than that because it's it gotten so hyped up. Um, something that can make or break whether I back a campaign is the video playthrough. Is anyone else like me in that way? Uh, Howie said agreed or lack of video playthrough, as Alex said. Uh, very true. Um, for me, that is 100% not a factor. Uh, I don't generally watch video playthroughs. Um, I, I just don't, honestly. And so I'm, it's, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of uh, uh, in the minority in that. All right, so this is Smartphone Inc. So Smartphone Inc. is a game where you are a, a mobile telephone uh, company, corporation, I suppose, your Smartphone Inc., um, which is cool because that's kind of a weird theme, to be completely honest, but, like, it works. Um, this is... Is this going to be a Dice Tower Essentials line? I don't think it's going to be a... It's from Arcane Wonders. Arcane Wonders is who puts out the Dice Tower Essential games, like Viral and Sheriff of Nottingham and stuff like that. Um, I wrote a whole thing on Discord on why it isn't doing better. Thanks for reading it, Nick. Is it in the Kickstarter page? Because I specifically do not look at the Kickstarter tab in Discord because I don't want anything uh, spoiled for me. So if it's in Kickstarter, that's why. I, I purposely never, ever open that tab. Um... So essentially, there's a bunch of different markets around. There's like the United Arab Emirates, there's Europe, um, North Africa, there's South America, Caribbean, USA, Canada, China, all this different kind of stuff. So 
Um, and you're essentially trying to gain the most influence, I suppose, or control for your company in these different markets. And you have to go from market to market with these black lines. So if you start off in Europe, you can only go to here or here or over to here. And so, yeah, but then throughout the game, you can get these upgrades. Essentially, your phones can get better and you can um, give it like GPS and you can give it like Wi-Fi and you can put games on it and stuff like that. And different regions want different things. So like South America, you can kind of see wants like GPS, gaming, and then like battery life, which um, it is It is a Dice Tower Central. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if it actually was. I knew it was Arcane Wonders, but I wasn't sure if it, if it kind of um, still fell under that. But so, and so the different uh, regions want different things, you know, and so, and so once you get these upgrades, you can start putting your influence discs down here. It's ultimately very, very fun. Um, but I, I wouldn't want to play it at two, but I think one of the coolest things um about it is these uh, the action board selection. So they have these two action boards here that are double sided, and you have to overlap them in some way and cover up. I, you, I believe you have to cover up at least one of these symbols. But essentially, you turn them around and overlap them, and then whatever's still showing once you're done um, is what actions you can do on your turn. And so it's just trying to figure out how to arrange them uh, because covering up symbols also gives you a benefit. And so it's it, this part of it, I think is by far the most interesting part. And I hope someone else uses this kind of action selection idea because I think it's super, super cool. And Alex, Cheryl and, and uh, Howie all say this doesn't do anything for you. That's totally fine. I wasn't expecting to really care about it until I saw it in real life. And I really liked the way it looks. And then I was just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then I played it and I really liked it. I was not expecting to though. So to be fair, I was kind of in the same boat for a while. Um, was see see Diz, I'm with you on that. Said so I had fun, but I was curious to see how replayability goes. That is my biggest issue with the game, or what I would assume is the biggest issue of the game, considering I've only ever played it twice. Is basically right off the bat, I was like, okay, I think after three or four plays, you're pretty much playing the exact same game. I can't see how it would it I think it would get very, very samey. Now the main thing I think I was like, but you know what? You could pretty easily change that if you gave people new powers. If you gave people new of those upgrades where you upgrade the um different technologies like giving your thing Wi-Fi or giving it games like that, you usually get some kind of benefit from, from doing that. And so you can see here this is them choosing how to do stuff, which is cool. Um, in that way, um, I think you could add a ton of replayability to it, or at least make it, uh, the variables pretty different. And I think that would solve a lot of those problems. Um, and so I actually, I think it's pretty easy. And from judging from this campaign, so I'm just going through, because this is, I basically explained all the gameplay already. Not a hundred percent, but you know, I gave you the, uh, the, the yist of it. Robert Geislinger, love that guy. Get down to the stretch goals because the cool thing is, is the things that I wanted them to do is like stretch goals. I'm like it'd be very easy to just add more variability to this game. One, there is a new now going to be a new board for one to three players. This is great because I think this is also one of the bigger problems. Is like unless you're playing four or five, like don't play. It's just not going to be worth it. Um, so this I'm excited for. Uh, there's a scenario book, which I think is interesting. Um, but so this is investor directives. So I guess these are like different directives you can go for. And then this is the thing. There's new technology. So again, this is you trying to get those different technologies, which gives you a ability to have a special power. Other people can get it as well. But I think having more of these would hopefully keep the game fresh enough where you can continue to play it. And the good thing is, is most of the stretch goals are these new technologies. Also this guy, hipster CEO. I don't like the CEO. So we got new, new technologies, got new technologies. Again, this is holding hardcore mode, whatever the hell that means. Um, new technologies, uh, six round effort tokens, which is, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it seems cool. So again, so it's mostly new technologies. I like this, uh, alternative starter player upgrades. I think that's super, super cool. It's 300 grand. They're only at 200 grand. I don't think they're going to make it that far, um, which is unfortunate, but... 
nonetheless, I'm hoping that these things can make the game more replayable. Because I really, really like it, but I, I think it is going to be very, very samey after a few plays. Uh, but it looks like they are taking... Um, they're they're taking care of that, or at least it seems like they are, which is great. So I like Smartphone Inc. It seems pretty cool. I hope it does well. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, Howie said, I'm supposed to be getting uh, Vindication tomorrow, so I'm super pumped to try that out. Please tell us how that is. I'm very, That was one of the ones we did not back, and I, um, I'm i not like regretting the fact we didn't back it, but I'm, I'm wondering if we should have. So Export Export Definitive Edition, shipping for the second time as a Kickstarter exclusive with new metal shipping containers. Updated artwork and a final expansion. I don't even know what this is. Um, same thing goes for Artemis Project. What what were you referring to, Alex? About the sameness? Okay. Import, export. So it was originally launched on Kickstarter in 2017, after which it quickly sold out. This new definitive edition includes brand new artwork components and all the content from the original game, plus more. Uh, it's an economic role selection game with unique powers on every uh, card that lead to a specialized engine, which varies with every play. See below for reviews and how to play. Um, how's Dark Tower looking, uh, Nick? As from what I can tell, it's looking great. They're still testing it. They're still changing stuff. I mean, I played it at Dice Tower Con, and I saw it again at Gen Con, and it was pretty significantly different in terms of uh, stuff they've changed. Because, again, they're still designing it honestly um oh which color um but uh so it's uh it's looking good it from the stuff they changed seems really really cool um it looks ooh, this is fun what what container i probably choose yellow by the way i'm usually i usually play yellow although crook usually plays yellow so now i start playing i start playing red more but probably yellow at this although i do like this mint green um and so it's looking good it's looking good howie um I'm pretty pumped for it. Having no, having absolutely no uh, loyalty or or any kind of nostalgia with the original, I'm still pretty excited for it because it seems very very cool. Oh, Slurs so got uh, uh, vindication last week, but in too much pain to play it. That is a bummer. This is a Glory to Rome game, isn't it? What do you mean by that? Oh, I got you, Alex. Okie dokie. So this is uh, import-export. Again, so I, I like the bits. I don't really know much about the game. Rado, hey. Oh, okay. I was like, what? It's a bunch of Reddit threads. Interesting. All right. Cool. So Hot School said, Vindication is quite fun. My Sunday group has played half a dozen times. First Kickstarter edition is not starting to go stale yet since there are always new ways for Steve to win. Very cool. Um, yeah, at least with my color too. Yeah, I, I was, but uh, uh, Crookie likes yellow and Crookie uh, uh, has trouble telling some colors apart. So yellow is usually the easiest for him to see. So I defer that to him. <laughs> um, very cool. All right, what do we got left? We've currently got a couple now. All right, we got the Truth Vong Legends. That's a, that's that uh, uh, Simon, that Simon stuff, right? Is everyone looking forward to Ankh? Ankh looks pretty dope, not gonna lie. I just like Egyptian stuff. Let me go find the rest of these. Um. We got Meow. Love it. Love it. I love this cult cult leader right here. Tattoo Brawl. No paint, no game. And then the last one on our list is something called Goons. What the ass is that? We'll click on this. I'm just curious. <laughs> um, dice bags. Wer is Goons? Oh, you think it plays similar to Glory Realm? I got you, I got you, I got you, girl, I got you. 
Where is goons? We'll go to True Bang. Um, alrighty. So this is um, some Simon stuff. Oh, it's an Eric. I don't know. It's an Eric Lane game. Cool. Uh, it's made 1.2 milli checks out. So enter a critch fantasy world based on Norse myths and sagas where no game master is needed to experience the story driven the adventures. Very cool. Alrighty. Are the women clothed? I hope so. That's a big ass troll right there. All right, it's a storytelling cooperative game where one of four players take on the role of heroes determined to stop the forces of darkness. Uh, guided by the Book of Sagas and the legend system, the story unfolds with no game master in a rich fantasy setting where your actions and choices will be directly affect the environment and its inhabitants in a living world. Based on the award-winning True the Vang Chronicles role-playing game by Riot Minds in concept and designed by Alvaro Tapia and Paul Bonner, the board game brings the myths, sagas, heroes, and enemies life with, with amazing miniatures. That checks out. That is what they do. So now that Ankh is coming, no way I can back this. <laughs> yeah, how are you? Um, all right. I mean, the minis are nuts. This guy's bananas looking. Said, uh, regarding import export, you also can't choose your box color. Random of the five and a flag from a backer's country. I really enjoy the randoms of that. That is interesting, Parker. That is super interesting. <laughs> How weird is that? God, I like all those expansions. It's just crazy. They already have all this stuff. They just know they're already. They know they're gonna make one and a half million dollars. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Cool. Lots of stuff. Tons of stuff. They've crushed. They've crushed. We know. They've crushed. They've crushed. They've crushed. Ooh. A shrim worm. Yas, shrim worm. That troll is ugly. Okay, okay. Why aren't you wearing clothes? <sighs> uh, okay. I just like this guy. I just want this guy, honestly. Um, all right, all right. All right. Now we're in gameplay, finally. Is that a rich fantasy world? Yeah, we know. Um, it remembers your actions. That's interesting. Sleeves on the map board hold cards to keep track of how the story unfolds, revealing challenges that are overcome, different paths that are taken, and important decisions made by the players. Every choice has a significant impact that can shape the future. All right. Now he's got choices, then he flipped the card, kind of kind of Gloomhaven style. There's a really interesting discussion on the Discord about True Bang and why it's disappointed a lot of people in its choice of mechanics. That's interesting. Oh, they're moving. Hold on. Weird. Um, so you're going to travel. What's the general gist of it, uh, uh, Mr. Alex? I can probably look at it now. That Again, I, I specifically, I don't look at the... the um, Kickstarter one on Discord because I, I want to be surprised by everything. So you move your figure in a new region or band together with other heroes to form a group and moving, draw travel cards each time you enter a new region. Okay, cool. Discover stuff, so you explore interest points, fight enemies, and interact with the world depending on what is present in your region. And then you'll have to make choices depending on the cards, um, specifically the combat. Okay. So you cast your runes to decide your fate, draw runes from your bag, and check for successes based on your hero and stats. Players build the, com the composition of runes inside their bag through items, abilities, and character progressions. And you fight enemies. Enemies roam the land to seek to destroy Troidvang. You will cast runes in combat with them and allocate one rune at a time into equipment and skill slots to use them. And every weapon and class plays differently. Okay. That's right, baby. Screw the Phillies. Um, all right, and then, and then the step, the choices you make uh, make a difference, which I think is very cool. Okay, he's got bards, the weaver, dim walker, warrior. This all just, this all just reminds me of uh, Blue Maven. 
Ranger, Rogue. All right, cool. One thing I will say about Simon um, Kickstarter, they always have their stuff painted, and it always looks dope. Main thing is, I wish the women were wearing clothes. That'd be cool, you know? Because who fights topless like this? Nobody. This guy is dope, though. That guy is crazy. Jesus. All right. Again, this is not my game, but seems cool. Combat is a bag pull, so it's really anti-thematic since you can't really plan ahead or choose your attack. Yeah, that's kind of what it's seeming like. Um, I mean, I, my guess is is that... Oof, I like the purple on that, dude. My guess is that no matter what you draw, hopefully you can make it work. That's the main thing. It's like if you just draw and you're just completely screwed based off what you draw... I mean, I guess that can happen always with dice anyway, but like, yeah, it's... That can be tough. This is dope right here. That's a dope mini. Oh, he's like stuck in mud. That's too bad. Okay. Whoa. Jesus. Again. Got a lot of topless dudes in there. That's, that's also very true. All right. I, I like the I like the kind of dwarf and the troll minis are, are just freaking dope. This a that's a big goat. Um, all right, cool. Again, not my kind of game. Would play it if someone wanted to play it, but it's not my jam, but very, very cool. So this one is on there, On the Rocks, a mar marble drafting cocktail recipe fulfillment board game. Is it, oh, so is it like Potion Explosion kind of? That's interesting. So On the Rocks, it's getting to its goal, all right. That is interesting. That's a that's a good idea. Is making cocktails? That's cool. I actually like that a lot. Um, let's see, a mixologist. Compete over two, three rounds of play until the last call is made. The mixologist who has the most income from drink sales and tips is the winner of the night. All right. Okay. So you got a highball martini, hurricane, in old fashioned. So assume the role of um, mixologist competing in multiple drinks orders throughout the night. On a player's turn, you will handle complaints, roll dice to draft ingredients, mix the ingredients in the mixing area in place, and select one bowl of ingredients to the player board, save any extra ingredients, resolve any special actions, collect and use tips, and pass the dice and shaker bag to the next mixologist. This tad is dope. That has nothing to do with the game, but that tad's dope. Um, okay. Kabuki Kid, what's up? How are you? I haven't seen you in so long. What's going on? Um, he said, yeah, but in a story-based game, do you really want to start combat saying to yourself, okay, let's wave my hands and see if I swing an axe or cast a spell as you reach the back? No, Slivers, I completely agree. My ho Again, my hope is is that – we're talking about True Bang, if anyone's just joining us. My hope is, is that um, – no matter what you get, there's ways you can make it work. But yeah, I, I agree where it's just like, um, like I want to be able to somewhat plan. Like don't get me wrong, I like in games where you have to constantly adapt to whatever situation is, but that's not that. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of bootsy. I agree. Um, it said of the Gen Con Hall games, uh, I feel like there's that wasn't the rest of the sentence, but it said of the Gen Call Hall games that you have had the chance to try out yet. I'm guessing say, have you had a chance to try out any of them? Um, not really. Mike has been in tech this whole weekend, tech for his play, and so he has a lot of free time basically because he's just waiting for his scene to come on. Because uh, it's like a bench, basically a bunch of one acts, so he's only in one of them. Um, this seems cool, by the way. I like I like the little they have the mixing bowl, very cool. Um, but uh. What was I just saying? Oh, so Mike's been reading a lot of rule books. He read uh, Nagaraja. He said it looks super cool. He read Colors of Paris, which I'm super excited for. He seems pretty pumped about it. Uh, I think he's reading Abomination right now. Um, what else did he read? Mm, something else. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, so we haven't really had a chance to play much. We're actually going to try to this week, try to blow through a lot of them. Um, it's just a lot to play. So not too much. Not too much, unfortunately. This seems cool. I like this idea. I like the concept of building drinks, kind of post-explosion style. 
Um, so I've been around you. Yeah, sorry I haven't been on. You must go live when I'm busy. Kabuki, you're good. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. I said, if it was gameplay like Dice Throwing, you're talking about True Bang. Uh, sure, but in the narrative, story-rich, lore-heavy games, it seems like a, like a poor decision made just to be different. I kind of agree with that. That's kind of what it sounds like. Again, it wasn't my kind of game anyway, but that that also... I would have to see how it plays out, but it does seem like it's not going to be very fun. Um, all right, so it's a party game for 3 to 12 players. I'm guessing 6 to 12. Usually 3 is not great. So we're jo we are joining a cult. I think this looks very culty. Look at this cat. Look at this cult leader cat. Great. Adorable. So Meow is based on Mao, the classic party game. You are cat cultists competing to be the first to compete, complete the ritual. Each game uses a small set of hidden rule cards, follow all the rules, and win the game. At the start of the game, you only know your rules and the rules held by the player to your left. As more rules are broken or revealed, you'll learn more and more about what you need to win. That's kind of interesting. That's really interesting, actually. Be the first to complete every action in the game held by any player to win, but be warned, it's not as easy as it looks. Cocktail, the movie, the game. Love it. I always want, I never drank, but I always wanted to be one of those, like, fancy bartenders who, like, would juggle bottles and, like, catch one on its head and then pour it out and throw it at someone's face. Um, this is pretty cool. I like the idea of, like, finding out the rules of the game as you go. I'm just sad about the bad combat as the entirety of the game otherwise sounds maze bang. Yeah, it does sound pretty cool otherwise. Hey, you know, that's how it goes. It can't all be bangers. Uh, ask each player if you've broken any of their rules. If you've broken a rule, the player holding will read it aloud. Your turn ends immediately. Very, very cool. This seems cool. I mean, as a party game goes. So, meow, meow. You must say meow twice. Pig nose must pretend. Nose is pig nose. I don't know what that means. Um, okay. I just like I like the I like the fish fish cult. Great. All right. Fun. Cool. I mean, we're not really huge party gamers, but that does... Who was that? Oh, I don't know. That. Um, why not? Sounds fun. Alrighty. Is it break a lot of glass of shit cocktail style? Yeah, for sure. I picked up clicked on this one because I am so curious about this. This is freaking wild looking. <laughs> so you can design your own three... Whoa, their goal is $323 and they've made almost 200 grand. What percentage are they at then? I'm so confused. Um, and they're from New Zealand. I want to know what percentage they're at. Um, Chaz said, hi. Hi, Chaz. I love you. I love your beautiful face. Um, okay. The Goblin Grotto and Claw Haven. Okay, okay. So now you're building on medieval buildings using Claw Haven, open lock system from simple houses to huge complex structures. Anything is possible. Explore the Goblin Grotto using the modular Grotto Cavern system. Walls and floors can be combined to create a huge variety of underground caverns and grounds above straw structures. Good job, Nick. Okay. I mean, is it just buildings? Gosh. See, the thing is, like, this would take so long to print. <laughs> that is so long. But it is cool. Ooh, I like the one with the big deck. That's cool. You made him bless you saw. Aw. <laughs> What's up, Chaz? I love you, brother. You're the best. Um, oh, so you can really design your own buildings. You'd be like, okay, I need to be three stories. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. And they all lock together? I think so. That's cool. That is freaking cool. No wonder this is doing so well. Ooh, that's awesome. You can design your own roofs. Oh, that's cool. Did he kick the dirt while sh sh shrugging? Probably. Shaz is that magical. But yeah, so they all just stick together. This is freaking cool. Okay. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, look at this big moon. That's cool. All right, so the Goblin Grotto, the Grotto Floors. Okay. 
And then these are the walls. Okay. Ooh, the Grotto Bridge. I love this. This is, I would get it just for this. This is cool. That's a cool mini. I'm probably doing those building looks sweet. Hey, Nick, the big one in this one is you. You're not wrong. I like this guy. Yeah, sorry. I always want to look at this kind of stuff. I don't care if anybody else doesn't. This is my show. <laughs> this is cool. Ooh, that looks cool. I love the fact that you can build your own. I think that's so freaking cool. I think it's such a good idea. You can design it exactly how you want, as cool or, or as ridiculous as you want. I think that's freaking dope. Okay, so how does this? How does the pledge level for this work? Um. So, all right, so it's ninety bucks, and you can build all of Chlorhaven. So it's all the stuff to build that. Okay, no wonder this one has been freaking crushing. So about. So it's not 90 bucks, it's 60 bucks because this is New Zealand dollars or Hobbit dollars as we call them. So it's 57,000%. That's what they've done. That's just fine. Okay, so if you want to go all in, it's 100 bucks. But that is very cool because, again, like you can – I've got mosquito bites up the ass. I don't even know where the hell I got them from. Um, again, you can make these as big or as – that's freaking cool. I, that's awesome. That's very, very cool. All righty, people. No, I don't want to look at this one. Um, I think that's it. What was the last one? Oh, this one was goon. So let's see if I can just find it because now I don't know where I am. Goons. Nope, apparently not. Um. Yeah, it's fine. Um, okay, everybody. I think that is – so that's a very good deal. You can use the STL to make whatever you want. Totally. I think that's a freaking – I believe we call it a banger deal. Whoa. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good deal. Um, uh, just you can use the STL files to make whatever you want. That's super cool. Like that is – that is a good, good deal. Um, because, again, you can make it as big or as small. You can make it a really long house if you want to. Make it a really tall one, really skinny one. Make one with a deck. Like, that is freaking – that is cool. That is very, very cool. Um, okay, people. I think that is going to be it for me. Um, I am going to um, head out. This was wonderful. Thank you so much for being here for Kickstart Let Heart. Really enjoyed doing this. Glad to be back. Um, just pumped to be uh, – Done with convention season so we can focus on just normal stuff, you know, and streaming and making videos again and stuff like that. Now that it's over, we can kind of hang out and chill. And so um, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And subscribe to us if you're new and you haven't already done that as well. Um, so modular SDL building is simple but brilliant. I totally agree. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you all have a great day. Tomorrow, um, Mike and I are going to be on Gen Con's Twitch channel. We're going to be playing uh, – well, we're going to be doing kind of like a Gen Con wrap-up, just kind of talk about the con, talk about like, you know, what happened, what we saw, what was cool, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. And then we're probably going to play Naga Raja after that because it's not too long. And so um, we're going to be doing that. And then the rest of the week, uh, I'm going to be playing a lot of solo games because Mike is going to be out of um, – He's going to be at tech. So he's not going to be streaming with me for the rest of the week. So it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of solo stuff. Um, so I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Again, uh, join our Discord. If you haven't, you can go to discord.thebrothersmurf.com. Um, and so you can participate in the Kickstart conversation that's always going on there. Um, I love you all. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. And we'll see you a little bit later. Bye.
手をね手をね手をね。